Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Allison Cruz, and I'd like to welcome you to the deep and dark cave that lies outside of the Festival Temple Castle here in The Legend of Mystical Ninja, starring Goemon and Friends. The last time, we completed the third dungeon of the game, and it was pretty time consuming, but not as bad as I thought. The best thing to come out of it, aside from getting Sasuke's special uh, ice abilities, is the fact that we also got ourselves a very unique weapon for Ebisumaru, which turns any drop that an enemy will leave upon its death uh, a dumpling so it's fantastic and just the sheer notion of walking around with a piece of meat and slapping in some dude's face to get you know health out of it is pretty amusing i mean you really can't go wrong with that but we're back out here to aki yashidai and not anywhere near where i said i was going to leave you guys at the end of the last part because uh i was getting a little too ahead of myself there this is definitely the part of the game that is most hazy for me i don't remember a lot from this portion mostly because um, it's just something about completing the festival temple that made me stop playing the game for a while. And I do distinctly remember the ending of this game and the plot leading up to it, which is absurd. It's just the things in between still not 100% clear, but I do know we need to head back out here through this giant field that reminds me a lot of Halo, actually, uh, to this door that we haven't entered, and it's one of the few places we actually haven't visited yet, but we definitely need to head here to trigger a couple of things, so although I should probably be playing as Goemon for plot-related reasons, we're going to be seeing some very interesting things here at the Gateway Viewpoint, starting with a cutscene. Keep running, Ebby. Oh my, I never expected to see you here. Um, Omitsu, is that you? What, what are you doing in a place like this? Ah, uh, well, I'm on my way to Kyushu on a delivery. Wait, what? All the way from Oedo Town to Kyushu? Man, Uber Eats just goes anywhere. <laughs> Ever since our business was featured in Gourmet Magazine, the phone just won't quit ringing for deliveries. I think that maybe you guys would have hired somebody for that, but no big deal. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm in a hurry. See you later. Okay. Something tells me that <laughs> she made that seem a lot easier than all of the trouble we went through. <laughs> did Mitsu come all this way with those dumplings? Yeah, she did. Huh. Well, maybe she's a lot tougher and stronger than she seems. Ho oh, ho, a woman? Strong? Hilarious. Wait, what are we talking about? We should be headed for Kyoshu, where the Peach Mountain guys went. Damn straight. has separated entirely from Japan and has disappeared. Ah, what should we do? Well, that's easy. We've got to go after Omitsu. Priorities go on. Yeah, we have to go after the uh, large piece of land instead. But how? And this is where the game will literally straight up tell you to indulge in your deepest and darkest fantasies. When lost for answers, we should ask the fortune teller, Mr. Plum. But yeah, guys, I told you, this game was, like, goddamn bonkers, and if that doesn't really sort of solidify it, then I don't know what to tell you. But it only gets stranger from here, so now we can go to Oedo Town and do some business 
there. And for the most part, a lot of the people will have new dialogue regarding the sudden, uh, I guess, loss of Japan to the world, which is interesting. But uh, we're not going to talk to everyone, just a good portion of them. Because this is where we need to go to obviously continue the game and do a little bit of backtracking. I know we're only 12 parts in, but I don't think that means that we're not going to be backtracking to familiar areas, starting with the Gatekeeper. Hey, long time no see. The next area you must enter is... <gasps> I think it's to the East Musashi. You'll find Musashi as you pass through the gate into this town. Or at least that's what my gut feeling is. Wow, that is uh, pretty good, man, because that's right outside of this gate, and it's actually being blocked by a metal cube that we need to move, and of course, we can't do that just yet, so let's go talk to some people. How's it going, nerd? Strawberry, watermelon, apple, anything, no flying object can surprise me now. However, I might be a bit surprised if I saw a fruitcake coming flying through here. <laughs> Oh, okay, Peter Gabriel, whatever you say. So let's head to the coffee shop that Omitsu works at, and we can actually see what's, how some of these people are feeling about that. This coffee shop without Omitsu is like having a chocolate sundae with no chocolate. No! It's like a leopard with no spots! That sounds tragic. It looks like Omitsu's not here today. <sighs> Sad. And this guy right here. Enough with the pelvic thrust, man. Yeah, she's not here. What a drag. I wonder, does, do you say anything? Oh, Mitsu hasn't returned since she went out on a delivery. I'm a bit worried. Oh, yeah, I guess we should cease all business here. And maybe don't send Omitsu to do deliveries. I'm sure there are, you know, separate companies that could do that. But I think for the most part, we don't really need to buy anything else. If you want, you can get some food because, you know, bosses don't fill up your health afterwards. And what? This guy has like his one knee up. You've been warned. An adventure diary is a record of all of your blood and sweat. Okay there. <laughs> I can smell something big happening, but it's my policy not to stick my head into these things. Sure, whatever you say. The city of Kyushu flying away. These are difficult times. This is when your basic tools are important, namely your helmet, armor, and rice balls. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Your helmet, your armor, and your rice balls. All right, yes, that's true. I keep calling them rice cakes too. I don't know why. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's what I call funky. Yeah. Hell yeah. Not any of these rice balls we've been carrying around for 20 minutes. Anyways, did you get many fortune dolls? Oh, yeah, just keep on breaking the fourth wall there, sir. So I don't think there's a whole lot that I want to purchase here. I'm not going to go for any more armor, but at some point soon, we should be able to get the third level of rice ball unlocked to us. So I think this is going to take us to the gate of Oedo Castle, right? And I don't think... Yeah. Oh, no, I do want to go here. This is definitely where the boss is. Or by boss, I mean Plasma. I went all the way to Mukabe's place to talk about UFO, but I never thought there would be a house there. How in the world did we build that thing? <laughs> yeah, I think I even asked that earlier. Interesting. Uh, anyone planning to cause trouble will fall victim to my atomic stick. Yes, you already said that. I've been thinking for some time. The lantern at the Thunder Gate is way too big. It's impossible to pass under it. Ooh, Thundergate, you say. Anyways, oh, that's not it. Wait, what? Where am I? Oh, I am totally there. Okay, I'm just going from the complete opposite direction. So if we head here, this is where the fortune teller is. We definitely want to go and, yeah, pay our respects to him. Well, I finally made it to the top of Mount Fuji. To mark the event, I went to the pipe makers to buy an old pipe. Oh, okay. So just don't forget that he's up there. And is this guy carrying, like... Oh, that's just his arms. I thought he was carrying like a big old fish. <laughs> How about the fortune teller? All your worries shall disappear. After all, I operate a whole chain of them. Yeah, you do. I feel like you already said that. So we'll step inside and the game will literally tell us where to go next. In more obvious ways than you would expect. What's up? Lazuma! <laughs> Howdy, welcome to the plan of fortune teller. I will solve all your worries for 10 Ryo. All right, let's get started and get a couple of pelvic thrusts in there. Ah, bah, bah, bah. <clears throat> Prazuma. Prazuma. All right, in a cold region to your north, there is a Lamal Fear where it snows. There you shall meet someone who will be a great help to you, Prazuma. However, you must first go to Oedo Town to undergo one training session. One training session, you say? 
Interesting. Well, conveniently enough, they just happened to open a gym off in this area that will be of great use to us, and it just so happens to be located right across the street from Goemon's house, the initial starting point of the game. So it's kind of nice when you can return for these matters. I'm going to the muscle gym to become a great officer with lots of muscles. Oh, okay. But don't start calling me a muscle head. Yeah, that would only be the, the worst insult a non-American could give. And if we hadn't here, these, are, these everyone's literally just gonna start talking about it now. I wish I could travel all around Japan like you and beat up all the pickpockets I run into. <laughs> I think she's the one that tells you that her grandpa told her to knock anyone over the head who tries to steal from you, namely pickpockets. So here. Uh, you do need to be Goemon in order to use the muscle gym, so we'll have to keep that in mind as we come back, but I don't think much more of the dialogue changes aside from that. So let's head over here and yeah, how's it going, old man? Are you out of your mind? I have never eaten a UFO before. Oh, okay. Uh, what about you, kid? You got something for me? Some gum? Some bad? They're moving here. They're moving here. Yeah, he's got nothing. So we head across the street here, and this is going to be the neighbor of the Muscle Man. Yes, do you know the Muscle Man? Yep, because that's where Mokabe, the chain pipe maker, used to live. He's rebuilding the inside in a very strange way. You should drop by and see for yourself. Yeah, I'm just gonna go sneak into someone's house while they're renovating it. I'm sure they won't mind. And then over here, are you empty? Cause I think, no, you're not empty. All right. Someone new has moved into the house next door, but, oh, you both say the same thing. Okay. I remember that guy getting really mad in the beginning of the game if you try talking to him. It seems as though he's, he's caught on with life, but let's step inside. The Muscle Gym, where we get new and improved camera angles, hooray! But more importantly, we get this guy who's doing something very odd next to his sleeping wife? Huh? I am confused. Good of you to come! This is the Muscle Training Gym, where you can train to develop your muscles. Once you're done training here, you'd be able to simply push the metal box. Are you ready to start training? Yeah, I'm good. Well, that's a surprise. It's your chance to really develop your fr <laughs> your from into a body of steel. Yes, I will transform my from, please, free of charge. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Look at my muscles, look at my muscles. Here we go. Now then, let me explain the training. Several oyakatas will come out of the holes around you. For a fixed period of time, you must make sure your balloon is not popped. And you do this by throwing metal boxes at the Oyakatas. Aim with your control stick and throw the metal boxes with B. Try your best to keep the balloon from being popped. Ready, set, start. So this is pretty simple as one would expect. You just have to throw these a bunch of times and not let your balloons get popped. If you uh, throw three in a row, that will bring them all the way down. And you wanna be a little bit careful because these are not in the greatest cycles. All right, Did I, I think I missed that one actually. All right, I just do three on every single one and then that's generally good enough for me. But, oh, oh it's okay. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. So if you uh, end up throwing and then moving too soon afterwards, you miss, obviously, like I've been doing. All right, let's try this. I screwed up the cycle. All right, I think we're good. But it generally just gets harder a little bit later as you go. It's not that bad, so. Oh shoot, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like really silly and weird. And uh, this only exists to give uh, Goemon a special ability, so... Oops. Get away from my balloon, dude! Oops, I screwed up. No, I didn't. Uh, maybe I just don't know how to count while I'm talking. Uh, yeah, all I'm really doing is just button mashing. <laughs> just button mash. There we go. So as long as you can kind of keep everyone under control, then you'll be more than safe, but I've basically reset that about eight different times now, so... Yes, muscle, muscle man! Yeah, not Macho Man, you gotta be the Muscle Man. There we go. So yeah, um, don't worry, we'll have another training montage here soon enough with more of these Oyakatas. Oh, there goes my phone. Back show? Indeed. Oh, way to go, now you can call yourself a Macho Muscle Man. 
That's right, sudden impact magic powers. Also, behold the power of conditioning. By consuming more money, you will be able to move heavy thing for a specific period of time. Furthermore, while the magic power is in effect, you will have double the attacking power. However, because damage from the enemy will also double, which is really kind of interesting, but you want to keep in mind that the chain pipe doesn't exactly work for the double power, and it's not really going to be all that useful in about 20 minutes, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Hey, that new person had moved in. I was hoping he'd be a bit more handsome. I think he wants to open a muscle gym, and is looking for young people who want to develop their muscles. Yes, indeed. Do you guys remember that movie? God, what was it? Was it Only God Forgives? Where that one guy, who, who's the really popular doctor from Doctor Who after David Tennant? It was like Matt something. Like Matt. It wasn't Matt Lucas. It was a different type of Matt. But that guy, he plays like the antagonist in it, or at least one of them. And they had like a really enticing scene of him like being really like intimidating and really scary but they really didn't use any of the cool scenes from the trailer where he's like rubbing his stomach and saying look at my muscles look at my muscles he never said that once in the movie and i wanted to see it in context and it never came to fruition another thing that pissed me off about only god forgives <laughs> so we're back over here and if you want to be a macho man well then you better uh have a little bit of saiyan blood in you because you turn into an actual Super Saiyan, which is kind of incredible. Now we can move Metal Box. <laughs> so this is really nice and all, but it'd be cool if this was more practical in other areas other than this one. 